It's really important to consider misconceptions in planning because it allows you to identify the potential pitfalls that your students might um, come up against. It also allows you to really kind of think carefully about drawing those out so that they're not kind of hanging their knowledge or hooking their new knowledge onto knowledge that is already flawed, which can just kind of exacerbate the problem. Um, for instance, just last week, um, one of my year 13s really struggled to comprehend the fact that plants also produced proteins. So it was really important that we went right back to actually what a protein was so that they could break that misconception that proteins build muscles. Well, actually proteins do far more than just build mu muscles. And we, we had to really zoom into a protein as a biological molecule to really think about that. Um, I think also that by by thinking about what the potential misconceptions are in your planning, you can actively plan really short little tasks that, that build those out, those identify those. Um, I really love using diagnostic questions. And in particular, I've been really trialing concept cartoons more recently. Um, and it's surprising how much you get out of a discussion surrounding a concept cartoon. And I think that's really powerful in the classroom. One example of how I've kind of attempted to uncover a misconception is by using a concept cartoon with GCSE students a couple of weeks ago about mutations. I was trying to uncover the misconception that mutations are always bad. Um, so I created a concept cartoon in which I had different statements looking at what a mutation does in terms of how it alter alters the protein structure. So. I had one that talked about mutations always altering the protein structure, always rendering a protein kind of unfit for purpose, and then others just slightly nuanced, so not always causing a problem, but whenever, they, the, whenever a mutation was present, it did cause a change, whether or not that change was a problem or not, and then the correct answer that actually mutations can happen and not cause any change at all, um, and really just delving into that mutation being a change in the base sequence that might cause a change in the protein structure but not always. I think that was a really useful exercise because by doing that first it then meant when we did look at when mutations do cause a change in protein structure that wasn't the first thing that pupils thought and learnt and therefore the the one thing that they they kind of believed. So I think it really helped to set the scene for teaching about mutations. To complete a concept cartoon and identify the wrong answers, I used examiner's reports about um, previous um, things that students have got wrong when it comes to mutations. I also just really simply typed in misconceptions in teaching genetics to GCSE and found um, blog posts and found kind of lists of possible misconceptions um, and used those. I think it's really important to revisit misconceptions quite regularly. I use do nows to do this. Um, so if I've taught a misconception or explicitly unearthed or identified a misconception within one lesson, I might then use a do now as a follow up to that misconception in the following lesson. Um, I've also really enjoyed using um, online quizzing in this current day and age to double check whether or not those misconceptions are still there um, later on. So for some of my classes, I've been putting my diagnostic questions onto an MS form and then using that to um, kind of find out, are they still there? And if they are still there, I can then use that to inform kind of discussion in further lessons.